Hi everybody, this is Doug with another video for my fellow device patients and my future fellow device patients. This one is about pacemakers. Let's call it Pacemaker 101. Everything you need to know about the basics of a pacemaker. Now remember, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just some guy on the internet. I hope this information is helpful to you, that you can better understand your device and uh, have a better conversation with your physician. Thanks. So you already have a pacemaker or you're about to get one. Why? Reason is probably because you were having symptoms, things like shortness of breath, exhaustion, uh, dizziness, lightheadedness, maybe you were even passing out. The reason those were happening is because your heart rate was dropping too low to sustain your body. In some cases, people might even be experiencing pauses in their heart rate, ones that last 10 or 20 seconds or even upwards of a couple minutes, and obviously that's not good. So your pacemaker is there to help prevent that. Uh, the way it does it is it monitors your heart and it's looking for the heart's natural heartbeat. And if the heart doesn't beat in time, the pacemaker sends an electrical impulse down into the heart that mimics the natural electrical activity of a heartbeat and the heart contracts. It's a, it's a pulse so small that you won't even feel it, but that cycle begins over and over again every time the heart beats. If it beats on its own, that's great. If it misses a beat, the pacemaker kicks in and you don't even notice it. The pacemakers are smart enough to determine if you're sleeping or if you're walking upstairs or if you're running a marathon and it can keep up with you at any level. So they're kind of cool. Now, there's a couple of different kinds of pacemakers out there. This is a traditional pacemaker. This is what's been implanted for you know 40 some years. Uh, they're pretty small now but there's a new generation that's just come out that looks like this. There, the difference is that this one requires a lead wire that runs from your chest into your heart, and this one is implanted directly in your heart. There are no leads at all. Uh, so I will explain a little bit about the differences between the two. This is what we call a traditional pacemaker. This is what's been implanted for decades now. Uh, it's a pretty small device. It goes under your skin or under your muscle. You should actually talk to your doctor about which implant you're going to get. Under the muscle is a little less visible and it's a little better for uh, uh, cardiac athletes, people who are pretty active. Uh, but it can be implanted under the skin or under the muscle here in the meaty part, uh, below the collarbone, but ab above the breast line. And then there are also these lead wires. And this is how the electrical impulse gets down to the heart. It's a very flexible wire. Uh, it's a metal wire that's encased in polyurethane or silicone. And it is snaked all the way down to your heart. And this little part right here, uh, this is a timed lead, but there's also one that looks like a corkscrew. This one is pushed into the heart wall and it gets secured with those little tines. And then there's a screw in one you, you twist in and it, it secures to the heart wall. But this is implanted through a vessel that runs uh, just under the collarbone. It goes down into the heart. So these are implanted in the heart. And then this is implanted in the pectoral region right here. They sew you up and you're good to go. Uh, now, this is the new generation. This is made by Medtronic. It's called a Micra. Um, this is the next generation of, of pacemakers. It is inserted with a catheter through the femoral artery, so near your groin. It's snaked up your chest, up the major, major artery there, up the aorta, and is in, uh, into, put into your heart and secured into the heart wall. These little tines that are on it are actually inside the uh, chamber when it's implanted. They push it up against your heart and then they deploy the the little tines and it grabs your heart wall and then it just sits inside your heart. And believe it or not, that it, it works like a charm. Uh, this has been out for a couple of years and the second generation of this was just launched in 2020 and it is available or is, uh, it can be used by upwards of 50% of pacemaker patients. So if you are a new pacemaker patient or if you're gonna be getting a replacement in the future, it's possible that you might be getting a micro device. One thing I always tell people to do is to talk to your doctor about your hobbies. Uh, this is especially true if you're getting a traditional pacemaker. It's really not much of a concern if you're getting uh, one of these micros implanted because it, it just doesn't, it's not the same issues. But if you're getting a traditional pacemaker, you want to talk to your doctor about your hobby, especially if you're going to be doing something like golfing or swimming or playing tennis, especially if you're a hunter. Uh, the reason why is that when your device is implanted, you don't want to be putting a shotgun or a rifle up against this area. You might cause damage to the lead or the device. So if you're a left-handed shooter, they may decide to implant your device on your right side. It's just a consideration to make. It's something you want to talk to your doctor about just to make sure that your hobbies aren't interrupted just because of the placement of your device. That's it. Pacemakers 101. They're there to keep your heart rate from dropping too low and to keep up with you no matter what activity level you're at. 
I hope the information was helpful to you. I hope you'll subscribe to my page or check out some of my other videos where I talk about things like magnets and airport security and how we can safely interact with those things. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.